The new M3 iPad Air is 250 bucks more expensive than the 11th gen iPad, the A16. So if you choose to spend the extra cash, what exactly do you get for that money? And is it actually worth it? Should you just buy this iPad? Because right now, on Amazon, it's only 328 bucks, and it has a bunch of upgrades like double the storage, 128 gigs, which is literally matching what you get with the iPad Air. So let's see if you should just buy the regular iPad instead. So in this video, we're gonna be comparing everything like the design, the speakers, the performance, the ports, the displays, reflectivity, gaming, everything. Let's jump right into it. So I got them here on the table, and if you're having a hard time trying to figure out out which one is which, here is the difference. See that right there? That is the smart connector for the Magic Keyboard, the new version that just came out, which is a lot better than the one you get with the iPad A16, which you can see right here, it has the connector on the side. Actually, here's a difference. You have this little connector here for wireless charging the Apple Pencil, which we have the Apple Pencil Pro right here for the iPad. You still have the magnetic feature, but it does not support the Apple Pencil Pro and wireless charging. I actually wanna jump right into the speaker comparison because a lot of you guys like to hear if there's any differences between the two, so let's get started. You guys let me know your thoughts down below, but to me it sounds like the iPad Air definitely sounds louder, like the highs and the mids sound better. Now moving over to comparing the displays, the nice thing about the iPad A16, the 11th gen, is that it has the same 500 nits of maximum brightness. It also has True Tone, which kind of adjusts the color balance to match your environment, but there's a big difference between these two displays. Let me turn them off so you can see. I don't know if you'll notice, Ben, I don't know if you can see from here. No anti-reflectivity layer on the base iPad. This thing is laminated, which means the glass is laminated to the top, which also helps make the display look nice and black, like a deep black, where the display here becomes more gray because it has a gap in between the glass and the display, which is not good. It causes something like this. You have that hollow sound, which also gives you an issue of seeing a gap when you're looking at it from the side, especially when you're using the Apple Pencil at an angle, you could literally see a gap in between it where the iPad Air experience is a lot better. It's just directly on there, looks so nice. Another difference is that the iPad Air display has better color gamut because we have DCI-P3. You can see this WebKit logo on the Air, but it literally does not appear on the iPad because it only supports sRGB colors. So it's definitely not as color accurate. And one downside with both the displays on the new iPads is that you don't have the option to get nano texture display glass like you can with the iPad Pro. But thankfully, our sponsor Paperlike has their new Screen Protector 2.1, which softens reflections by using tiny microbeads called nanodots that add resistance, giving you haptic feedback for your Apple Pencil. So it feels like you're actually writing on paper, which nano texture doesn't do. So you end up with the best writing and drawing experience on the iPad with Paperlike. So order Paperlike for the iPad today by using the link in the video description below. And now with that said, let's jump into performance. The first thing I wanna test is actually the Wi-Fi speeds because the Air has Wi-Fi 6E while the regular base iPad only has Wi-Fi 6, which means it does not support the six gigahertz band. For example, we have a six gigahertz band Wi-Fi right here, Thrive 6G, but it literally will not show up on the regular iPad because it is unsupported. We only have the five gigahertz band. So let's test it and see if it actually makes a difference. Let's do the base iPad first, right here on the right side. Sheesh, 814, that's on the five gigahertz band. That's actually pretty impressive. 240 upload, that is pretty good for Wi-Fi 6. Let's do the air. Woo, all right. 
I thought it was gonna be worse for a second. 885, it's just a little bit better. It's like negligible. Look at that, 236, almost the same. Now the nice thing about the new base iPad is Apple finally doubled the storage. It used to be 64 for years, 128 gigs which is exactly what you get with the iPad Air. That's a crazy good value for 350 bucks or 328 on Amazon, link below. But what if the speed is faster on the Air? Let's do a speed test right here. Look at that, sequential, 1400, 1400, 900, 900. These are the same SSDs, same speed, no downside with the base iPad, that's really impressive. But what about the actual USB-C ports? Are they the same in terms of speed? Well, I got an SSD right here to see if there's a difference. So I plugged it into the base iPad. You can see I have it open here. Let's take this folder, which is 5.17 gigs. Let's grab it and drag and drop it and move it right onto on my iPad right here and time how long it takes. This looks like it has a pretty slow USB-C port, probably lightning USB 2 speeds. There you go, sheesh, that took forever. Two minutes and six seconds to transfer a five gig folder. And now let's do the same thing on the iPad Air. Holy crap, that's going fast. No flippant way, guys. Seven seconds. <laughs> the iPad Air just finished in seven seconds compared to what, two minutes and six? Are you kidding me? That took forever on the base iPad A16. That I didn't even think would matter that much, but now that I'm thinking about it, we sat here for two minutes waiting on the iPad. Seven seconds on the iPad Air. And now of course, let's do Geekbench 6. As you can see here, we have basically the M3 chip, the very powerful M3 in the iPad Air, and the A16, which means that it doesn't get Apple intelligence. Just look at this. The Air has this really nice new Siri. This doesn't, it has the old Siri animation, and of course all the other features are not supported. We have six gigs of RAM on the base iPad compared to eight. It's nice that they upgraded it, it used to be four. And holy smokes guys, the iPad Air is almost twice as fast, 90% faster to be specific versus the A16. Look at that. I mean, the single core, not a big difference. It's only 19% faster. So in terms of the general snappiness, it's not too big of an upgrade with the iPad Air, but the multi-core is crazy. But let's be honest, guys, if you're in the market for an iPad like this, especially if you're considering the base, you probably don't really care about multi-core performance. Single core is where it's at. So this is speedometer 3.0. This basically checks how snappy your web browsing and web-based app use is gonna be. So everything from YouTube and all those other maps depend on single core. Right here, we can see 29.8 versus 34.3. It's honestly pretty close, guys. I think snappiness is generally about the same. And now moving on to graphics performance, this is what's actually gonna matter a lot for iPads because then it's factoring in things like, let's say video editing or gaming, which is the biggest one. So let's run this GPU test. By the way, the base iPad has a four core GPU versus nine cores in the iPad Air. And wow, we got a results. The iPad Air is 2.2 times faster in terms of graphics performance. Look at that, 20K, 44K. That is a big difference. Now let's test out 3D Mark, which is a gaming benchmark, which basically shows you the difference in gaming. The thing is, Steel Nomad Lite won't work on the base iPad because it doesn't have eight gigs of RAM, unfortunately. So I'll have to do, let's see, what is it? Wildlife Extreme Unlimited on both of these. Look at this guys, 15.8 FPS on the iPad, 39.2 on the iPad Air. That's 2.5 times better FPS. That's even bigger difference compared to Geekbench Metal, which means there should be a pretty big gaming difference, right? Well, let's actually find that out by playing Call of Duty. Let's do it first on the basic iPad, set the iPad Air aside. Now, of course, this isn't the most intense game, but it's a pretty good average and one that I personally like to play. Of course, some other ones might be more intense and that's where the iPad Air matters more. But one thing you gotta know is that these both have 60 Hertz displays. Even the iPad Air, which is 
$250 more expensive, still 60 hertz. For example, I'm here in the graphics settings, I have max frame rate 60 and max graphics quality. So if the base A16 chip can do this, in this game, what's the point of the M3? The only issue though, while I'm doing this, guys, seriously, are you seeing this difference? Huge reflectivity on the iPad compared to the Air, which looks so dang good. By the way, let's go into the graphics settings. Same settings, max and max. All right, here we go. We got in pretty quick and so far, I mean, it looks like we're getting really smooth. Frame rate, oh no. These settings. Oh, shoot, what is this? <laughs> what is this? All right, baby. All right, these guys gotta be bots, man. All right, whatever, homie. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. No, no, yeah. Woo! I don't know if you guys can tell, guys, but even on the base iPad, I'm having a blast. I'm not having any issues. Except for my uh, skill level. No, we lost. All right, so playing COD Mobile, no issues, perfectly fine. On the A16 chip, absolutely no frame drops. It was great. Once again, disclaimer: this is not the most demanding game, whatever. But a lot of the more fun games, like multiplayer games, like this, they're just fine on the iPad. And here we are on the iPad Air. Let's see if this feels any different whatsoever. Pre-fire. <laughs> All right, guys, maybe the iPad Air is better. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah! Let's go! Let's go! Got those two. All right, this is feeling pretty much, honestly, the same as the iPad. So for a lightweight game like this, I mean... You don't really have to worry. Woo! Woo, 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 woo. Oh, this is so good! <laughs> yes! Baby! You haven't died once. <laughs> yeah, iPad Air better confirmed, guys. <laughs> Get out of here! No! Don't kill me! Yes! Woo! <laughs> I didn't even use my Goliath. In terms of the performance, it's the same. I did not have any issues with the base iPad in a game like this. So if you're playing games that are simple, up to the level of Call of Duty, with 60 hertz limitation on both, there's no point of the M3 chip in its extra performance. You don't get 120 FPS. And now the last thing I want to mention is the front cameras. They both have the new 12 megapixel center stage, which means you get pretty much an ultra wide view on both of them. It's also landscape. So if you're using it with a keyboard, you don't have that issue where it used to be up at the top and it looks like you're looking to the side. Now it looks a lot more natural, definitely better. And looking at the quality on both of them, they are literally identical. So no drawback. Same thing with the rear camera. You get exactly the same camera and software on both. No flash on the air, so no differences at all in terms of cameras. So now with all that said and tested, let's answer the original question. Is it worth spending more on the iPad Air? $250 more, same storage. Honestly, I don't think so because if you're buying an iPad to do iPad things, the new A16 11 Gen iPad is definitely more than good enough for only 328 on Amazon. Killer deal compared to 600 bucks for the iPad Air because from a lot of the stuff we tested, yes, the display is nicer. Yes, it has less reflectivity. It looks better in terms of the quality, deeper blacks on the display. The performance is better. But for the things that we did like testing YouTube, listening to the speakers, playing games like Call of Duty, this thing did just good enough. Honestly, there's only three reasons why you would buy the Air over the iPad. Number one is that if you're gonna be doing a lot of file transfers and things like video editing, since you have the faster USB-C port, so lightning fast transfers, you have the media encoders for video editing, so productivity work, this is definitely gonna be better. Or also if you want the better Magic Keyboard to basically use it like a laptop replacement, that is the reason why you should probably buy the iPad Air. But still, even with all that, 
I think you'll be just fine and happy with the A16 iPad 11. That is my take. So if you disagree or if you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Definitely check out those links to the Amazon sales because we have some good sales. Thanks for watching guys. Watch a couple of those videos right there. Subscribe above for more like this one and we'll see you in the next video.